What are these from attributes that can be used in an ASP.NET Core Web API or MVC app controller? Stay tuned to this video to find out. Remember to hit the subscribe button or go to youtube.com slash atroundthecode to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Learn Blazor WebAssembly with our three part online course series, as well as other .NET courses at roundthecode.com slash courses. With our ASP.NET Core web app open, let's go ahead and create a new controllers folder. Within that, we're going to create a new controller, which we'll name from API controller. To the controller, we're going to add the API controller attribute. This is used to serve API responses and it has features and behavior that help the developer experience in building APIs. In addition to that, we're going to add a root, which will be API slash from hyphen API. With the controller configured, the first attribute we're going to have a look at is from query. What this does, it will get the query string and map it to an action parameter. To demonstrate this, we're going to rename this action to from query. We're going to add a parameter to it of page with a type of integer, and we're going to add the from query attribute to it. What this will do is it will get the page from the query string and bind it to the page in this parameter. We're then going to go ahead and return the page as part of the response. And we just need to root it with a HTTP GET request with a root of from hyphen query. We're now going to go ahead and copy this, but we're going to add the optional name property that is in the from query string. And we're going to set that to P. What this will do is it will map the query string P parameter and map it to the page parameter in this action. This is where we can change the query string parameter and map it to a different name variable in the action. We're just going to change the root as well, and we're going to try it out in Postman. In Postman, we've got our root of from hyphen query with a page query string, which is equal to four. With that, we expect the response to be page of four. And we can see that is the case. With the name, we've changed our root and we've also changed the query string parameter and we've set it to 12. For that, we expect the response of a page to be 12. And we can see that is the case. Next, we're going to have a look at the from header attribute. What this does is it gets a header and can bind it to a parameter in the action. So because it works in a similar way to from query, we're going to go ahead and copy and paste these. I'm going to rename the action names to from header and from header with name. And we're also going to rename the roots to from hyphen header and from hyphen header with name. Now what we do is with JWT authentication, we can add the authorization header. We're going to go ahead and bind that to a parameter in the action. So we're going to change this to from header. We're going to change the type of the parameter to string. And we're going to name it authorization. And we're going to return that as part of the response. We're going to go ahead and do the same, but we're going to use the optional property of name in the from header. And we're going to name it authorization. As a result, we can go ahead and we can rename the parameter name to auth. And that's what we're going to return as part of the response. Let's give that a test in Postman and see if it works. So within Postman, we've got our from hyphen header root. And as part of the request headers, we've got an authorization key with a value of bearer space ABCD. If we run this now, we expect that to be returned as part of the response. And we can see that's the case. With the name property that we're using, we've changed the root there, and we've also got a 
request authorization header with a value of bearer space a b c d if we run that we've got a different property name but we've got the same value of bearer space a b c d form form is the next attribute that we'll have a look at this uses a http post request and passes in form value data and combined it to an action parameter once again, it works in a similar way to from header and from query. So we can copy the code snippet that we just writ and we can paste it and change some things. So we're going to change the root and the method to post. We're going to do the same for the roots. And we're also going to do the same for the names. This will be from form. And the one underneath will be from form with name. We'll change the attribute to from form. And we're going to pass in a form value with a name of name. And we'll pass that in as part of the response. We'll do the same thing underneath. We're going to change the name to name, which means we can now change the parameter name to full name or whatever we want. And it's going to bind it to the form value of name and return that as part of the response. Let's see if it works in Postman. So we've got our from hyphen form root in Postman. If we look in the headers, we've got a content type here and it's using multi-part hyphen form hyphen data. In the body, we selected form hyphen data and we've got a key of name and a value of David. With that, we expect the value to be David and we can see that is the case. With the name property, we can see that we've selected form hyphen data again. We've changed the root. We've got the key as name and the value as David. When we return the response, we can see that the name is different because we've named the parameter in the action as full name, but the value is still David. The from root attribute will take a root parameter and bind it to an action parameter. We'll go ahead and copy the from form code that we just wrote. We're going to change a few things here. So we're going to change it back to a HTTP get request for both of them. We'll change the root to from hyphen root slash, and then we're going to add the category attribute in there. I'm going to do a similar thing with the name property. We're just going to change the root name slightly. Change the action names to from root and from root with name. And we're going to change the attribute for the parameter and we're going to change it to from root. And because we've named it as category, we need to add the parameter name as category as well and return that as part of the response. So when using the name property, we obviously need to change that to from root and the name will still need to be category because that's the name of the attribute up there. But as we specified the name, that means we can go ahead and change the action parameters name. So you can change it to category name and return that as part of the response. Let's see it working in Postman. So in Postman, we've got our root as from hyphen root slash blazer. So we'd expect blazer to be returned as part of the response. And we can see that the category is returned and the value is set to blazer. With the name property, we've changed the root slightly and we'll also change the root attribute to entity hyphen framework. So we can see there that the category name is being returned as part of the name, but the value is entity hyphen framework. The from services attribute is different because it doesn't bind the parameter from the request. It binds it from the IOC container as part of dependency injection. So to demonstrate this, we're going to copy this code snippet and paste it underneath at the bottom. We're going to rename the root to from hyphen services and change the name to from services and we're going to add the attribute of from services. Now in this class library here we've got a date time service that inherits the idatetime service. 
It's got a public method in here where it gets the time that it is now. In our ASP.NET Core app, we can see that that's been added as a singleton as part of dependency injection. So we can go ahead and inject that in as part of the parameter in the action. So we pass in I date time service and give it a name of date time service. Then we can go ahead and call the get UTC now method, which should hopefully get us the time that it is now. We can see that is the case. Now, as this controller has the API controller attribute assigned to it, we don't actually need the from services attribute. It will try and bind it from the IOC container if it's unable to reference it with that attribute added. So we go ahead and remove the from services attribute and rerun it again to check it's still going to work in Postman. We can see that is still running. With that resolved, we want to see what happens if we don't have the API controller attribute added to the controller. So we'll go ahead and create a new controller. And we're going to call it from MVC controller. This time we're only going to add a root. We're not going to add the API controller attribute to it. We're going to assign the root as API slash from hyphen MVC. Let's remove the default action that's in there. Go back into our original controller and we'll copy and paste the action that we just created. Now with this, I haven't added the from services attribute. I want to see what happens when we run it in Postman. So I've run it in Postman and oh dear, we've got an error here. It says, could not create an instance of type I date time service. It's essentially can't get the instance from the IOC container. So in order to fix that, we just simply add the from services attribute. And running it again, it's now working and it's returning the current time. Last but not least, we'll have a look at the from body attribute. Now let's go ahead and copy the last action that we did and paste it underneath. A few changes we want to change it to a post request with a root of from hyphen body. We're going to change the name to from body. Now, as a rule, we can't use the from body attribute in more than one parameter in an action. If we do, it throws an error. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to add two parameters with the from body attribute. We want the customer's for name and surname. So we're going to add them in as parameters. And we're going to attempt to return them as part of the response. However, the application doesn't even run. We get this error here. What we need to do to fix this is that we need to add these parameters as properties in a class. We've already done this here with the customer model. So we've got the property of forename and the property of surname. So within that, we can go ahead, we can change it to one parameter, pass in the type of customer and name it as customer. We can then update the properties that we are returning. So it's part of the customer type. So we've got customer.forename and customer.surname. In Postman, we've changed our route and we've got a JSON request and we've got our payload here with our forename and surname. We can see that is part of the response. Now, like with from services, we've got the API controller attribute up here. As a result of that, we don't actually need the from body. So we'll go ahead and remove that and run it again in Postman. And we can see we're getting the same response. But what happens if we don't have the API controller attribute? We'll go ahead and copy this from the from API controller and we'll add it in the from MVC controller. As you can see, we haven't got the API controller attribute for this. So let's see what happens when we run it. We can see that it's running, but it's returning null values for that. Now, in order to fix that, we just add the from body attribute. 
We can now see that the values are being returned. Download the code sample for this tutorial at roundthecode.com slash .net hyphen samples. Not only will you get the controllers and actions featured in this video, you'll also get a Postman import script that allows you to execute the endpoints. Thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.